Hi everybody, my name is Jamie Lau and today I'm going to talk to you about A-Frame. So I hope you take away what A-Frame is, A-Frame's benefits and paradigms, and how to use it with React. So A-Frame is basically for virtual reality. It's originally from Mozilla VR and was released in 2015. Um, in order, it's an open source web framework for developing VR experiences on the web. Uh, so before A-Frame, uh, there was doing web VR had a lot of boilerplate. But what A-Frame does is that it kind of wraps it all into one HTML tag called the scene. And we'll see an example of that a little bit later. So the aim was to make something easy but powerful, something that goes beyond your basic 360 degree content uh, using positional tracking and controllers. So positional tracking um, is basically tracking your movement uh, in real life and mirroring that in uh, the virtual world. So you take a step forward here, you take a step forward in the virtual world and hope you don't hit anything in real life. <laughs> um, versus rotational tracking, which is your you know, Google Daydream where it uh, tracks the tilt of your headset or your head. Um, and then by controllers, I mean the two that you would get with your headset um, to use as your hands. So what are the benefits of A-Frame? You get it's declarative because it's based on top of HTML. HTML is easy to use and understand. Uh, it's cross-platform. It's VR, but it works on your standard desktop and smartphone. And it's tool agnostic, so it's unopinionated so that for web developers, you can use your popular tools that you and libraries and frameworks that are existing. So for us, it might be React, and for someone else, it might be Angular. Uh, and one of the biggest benefits is the pattern that it uses, uh, which is called ECS, the Entity Component System. By entity, it means your base container object that you can attach components to. Uh, components are your reusable modules that you attach to your entity to give it appearance, behavior, and functionality. So the entity by itself won't look like anything and it won't actually do anything until you put a component on it. For example, if you put a geometry component uh, on it that says it's a box and a material component that says its color is red, it will straightforwardly be a red box. Uh, and at the end, you have your system which provides global scope, management, and services for classes of components. So benefits. It, you're, it's flexible um, in defining your objects uh, because you can mix and match this, these reusable components. It promotes clean design with uh, decoupling, encapsulation, modularization, uh, and uh, reusability. And it is scalable. It is the most scalable way to build a VR application uh, in terms of complexity. And it allows for extending new features, uh, possibly sharing these features with the community, specifically talking about components. So looking at a more high level view of all this, uh, what's happening in your browser, right? What is the browser using your tech stack? At the bottom, you see WebGL and WebVR, uh, which are JavaScript libraries. And WebGL handles your 3D rendering. WebVR handles your support for different VR devices on your browser. Right on top of that is 3JS, uh, which helps to create and display your 3D graphics using WebGL. Top of that is the ECS we talked about. And right on top of that is where we get A-Frame and its components and the community components that uh, you can look up some of them on the registry. And on top of that, HTML and your framework like React. So through this whole tech stack, everything is accessible. So A-Frame has access to 3JS things. Um, and it's extensible, uh, A-Frame is extensible because you can actually create your own components for whatever behavior or appearance or functionality you want for your object. Um, you're not limited that way. So let's jump into an example of some code. So you'll see up here is your like bare bones HTML um, and you add your A-Frame things. So at number one, you get your script, where you're just pulling in your A-frame JavaScript. And number two is your scene, which is what I talked about that kind of encapsulates all your like web VR boilerplate in that, in that line, in that tag. And then number three is your primitive, which is kind of your out of the box uh, entity that comes with A-frame that's very good for beginners to start playing around and uh, making something. So I kind of zoomed in on that at the bottom. Your A box is your element tag, which it's pretty obvious it's a box. And your HTML attribute is your name, 
um, your, and this is your HTML attribute name, I'm sorry, and the HTML attribute value um, to define it. And it looks something like this. So if you had a, a VR headset, you might be able to go into it, rotate it, take a look, walk around it, and see what it looks like. But with seven, maybe six, I didn't count, um, HTML lines, you can make something already, right? But that's not all it is. We, that's digging deeper into it. Uh, A-Frame also has a, uh, let's see, there it goes, uh, has an assets management system. And it also, it, and then you use entities like I talked about. So number one, your assets management um, is basically where you keep all your assets, your models, your pictures, uh, anything you may, assets you need to use later on. And it keeps it all in one place. And then it also preloads them and caches them for better performance. Afterward, at number two, you have your entity, which is you know, part of your entity component system. And after that, geometry might be your component that you attach to it to tell it what it is and to tell it how it should behave. So that's a little bit of an example. But HTML, you can use like JSX, right? So let's see how you can use it with React. Um, you npm install A-Frame React. Uh, and of course, there is some boilerplate out there, which is uh, what I also used for my demo. And the benefits are that you let A-Frame handle all that heavy lifting of doing 3D and display um, and VR <laughs> displays. And you let React do um, the state and uh, views management. So I'm going to jump right into my demo here. Uh, give me a second. OK. So this is not the VR experience, everybody. This is <laughs> just a normal form. I'm going to type my name. You can see I tried it a bunch of times because it's saved. <laughs> and I'm going to enter my VR experience. It might take a second. So it's welcoming me. I'm taking my name is, of course, what's on the state. And uh, it doesn't look like much. You'll see some water. I'm standing on a little platform. And you see some mountains, a sky. And then I'm going to use my cursor to rotate. And you'll see I have another, I'm standing on a cylinder, and I have another cylinder. And I built this demo to kind of help, potentially help someone conquer a fear of heights by walking across this plank, knowing that there might be a really long, long fall, uh, long, long <laughs> drop. And that may be really scary, but um, so you could walk pa across. I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit. Um, and if you had a headset that does positional tracking and it, you can configure it so that you can use it for VR, and once it's configured, you just click this little button on the bottom corner. Um, that puts you into your VR. So this is more of like the 2D browser. And then you can um, jump into your VR world. So this is the demo, but let's look at the code. So this looks familiar, right, for those who do React. Um, you're importing your A-frame up here. Uh, and anything you need, you import A-frame React for your entity and scene. And these basically uh, wrap around the A-frame entity and scene elements and make them into React components. Uh, and you build your component, which is your scene, your assets. Here you'll see this is my plane, which is my ground, uh, or my ocean, as it is blue, uh, and my lights, my sky, which is used that texture, which is that mountain you saw before, my welcome text, my plank, my entity, I mean my two cylinder entities, and my camera that kind of tells me like where I'm viewing and where I'm standing. So it's pretty straightforward here. Um, and there's a lot you can do with it depending on what you want it to look like and the functionality. So I hope this inspired some of you to consider making VR experiences on the web with A-Frame. And I'm excited to see what you guys can make. Thank you.